Hey everybody, I'm Stacy, the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy, and I'm an elite Dixie Bell retailer here in Ardmore, Alabama at the Rustic Willow. So as you guys are jumping on, just say hey where you're watching from. I'm going to give it a sec just to make sure I'm live. Um, actually, I could probably pull it up. Let me see here. I've had some, oh, perfect. I see some people coming on now, so I know I'm all set. Um, I've had an issue before where I thought I was live. It showed like I was live, but then it wasn't working. So I'm always a little worried until I see at least somebody pop on. But um, again, I'm Stacy, the owner and artist of New Creations by Stacy. And tonight we are actually going to be working with some no pain gel stain. We're going to do a little custom mix. Um, and then we're also uh, going to be using the awesome new Silk Color Mirage down here on the bottom. Um, so, you guys, before we get started, Dixie Bell should be popping on in a little bit. Um, they'll be here to help answer any questions um, that you guys might have. And if I would happen to miss any comments as, we're, as I'm working tonight, um, I will go back after the live and answer any questions. Oh, hey, Mom. I see my mom popping on, too. Oh, hey, Rosario from Oklahoma. Oh, hey, I see Dixie Bell on too. So you guys, in the comments, um, I do have all the products that we're going to be using tonight. And I also have a link to the Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast Group. Um, if you guys don't follow that page, there's some awesome artists on there. So many inspirational pieces, just um, all kinds of information. You can ask questions on there as well. Uh, so definitely join that. And also, um, if you, I do have a link to my page if you like and follow me on Facebook. Um, that way you can see how everything turns out um, once I'm finished with it, as well as I do lives there on Friday nights at 5. Um, and before we get started, so back here, this is the door that we actually worked on last week in the Old World style. Um, so you can check out that video, but that's just it finished. I haven't staged it or anything yet, but um, that's it. So we will go ahead and get started. So I just want to let you guys know first what I've kind of done with this piece. Um, it probably looks like the top is stained right now, but it's not. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit more. This is actually a really light colored wood, but um, I'm prepping this for stain. Uh, so just to Tell you what I've done so far. Of course, I start off by cleaning everything with white lightning. Um, it's a TSP base uh, solution. It's specifically for um, cleaning um, before paint, for prepping for paint. So it's a little bit of a deglosser, and then it's also going to get just like all the grease, all the dust, everything like that off your piece. Um, and so once you clean with that, you want to make sure all that residue is off. So I go ahead and rinse it. Hey, Jane. I go ahead. Oh, perfect, you guys. And also, Jane posted. Um, she's in Port Ritchie, Florida, repurposed treasure, treasures. If you guys are a retailer, um, post, post the store or what area you're in so that if anyone else is watching, they're local, they can come in and find you. Um, and by the way, I forgot. I do have my affiliate link listed as well so that you can find your local retailer or you can also order on um, the Dixie Bell page through there. Uh, but back to this. So um, I cleaned it. Since we're using silk, I don't have to, I didn't need any um, like a bonding primer. I didn't need slick stick. Um, I ended up sanding quite a bit. These were really damaged. Um, they were stored in a barn, I think. At some point, they had some mold on them, um, and they are custom end tables. Um, so anyway, cleaned it with that. I don't have to worry about any primer. Um, our silk has a blocking primer in it, and we'll talk about that. Um, the top, I did go ahead and strip. I stripped it first, and then I went ahead and sanded it all down. Um, I had some watermarks, um, and I used Barkeeper's Friend to scrub those out. Uh, so that I had a nice smooth surface to work with. Um, so they were pretty damaged, like I said, and we're going to be using no pain gel stain tonight, which is an oil based stain. But the reason that it looks like it's been stained already is because right before we came on the live, and I don't normally do this if you've, I've stained quite a bit live before with the oil based stains. 
but tonight I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Um, these were in a condition where they needed a little more prepping. Um, so I did add a, um, and it's not by Dixie Bell. Um, we don't carry a wood conditioner um, for pr a specifically a pre-stained wood conditioner. And that's what you see on here now. Um, and the reason that I did that is because they had so many issues. I wanted to decrease my chances of getting any blotches or anything like that. I wanted the um, stain to go on pretty easily and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Evenly. I wanted it to go on evenly. So normally there's not an issue, but like I said, these were kind of over the top. So um, as far as damage was concerned, so that's why I'm using this um, pre-stain. So it's about, you want to leave a pre-stain if you use it on for about 5 to 15 minutes before you stain. Um, and then if there's any excess, like it's pretty well all dried in now, but if there's any excess, you would just want to wipe that off before you use the no pain gel stain. And this is what we're going to be using tonight. We're, we're going to actually custom mix a color. We're going to put a little Georgian cherry in it, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. And my Georgian cherry is new. I never, never use Georgian cherry. <laughs> so let's see here. And the Georgian cherry, I mean, it's cherry. It's got, got that red, kind of red um, tone to it. And then we're going to be mixing it with walnut because all I want from that Georgian cherry is a slight undertone. It's going to complement... Um, the Mirage really well and then also it's going to um, it's going to match some other furniture that she has which is why I'm actually doing this but the difference is very very subtle I actually have this one done over here let me um yeah I know I love walnut walnuts really one of my favorites this is how it's actually gonna come out looking I know it doesn't seem like it's a ton different from this one um, but as this dries, this wood would lighten back up if I didn't stain it right now. So this is not the true color of it. It's very, very light. I also had another reason I use that pre-stain, which I rarely, rarely do, um, was because the wood was actually a little bit different. It's all one piece, but um, there were some like the grain was really kind of odd on this one over here. And um, it was like discolored, but it wasn't from a spill because it followed the grain of the wood. And it was really kind of gray. And I wanted to kind of see if I could even it out, which I was able to by adding that pre-stain. So here's Walnut. It's pretty dark, not quite as dark as Espresso, um, but it's pretty dark. So the first thing you want to do when you open your stain is you want to get it stirred up. Oh, hey, Tony. Um, so I want to tell you guys, uh, on the last two lives, I've been hitting the head with my camera because of my tripod. Um, so I just want to say that um, in case we have any incidents, I'm almost afraid to touch this. But I'm going to drop you down so you can see this mix. Um, <laughs> And hopefully, hopefully I don't um, hurt myself in the process. <laughs> so let's see here. So actually, I think I'm going to try to move my little stool over here. Yeah, perfect. So you guys can see. So first thing you want to do is just stir up your stain. I did this earlier today when I did the other piece. Um, and that's why it's not quite as separated. But a lot of times you'll have all the good stain stuff on the bottom and you'll have like that oil on the top. So you just want to make sure you stir it up really well. I usually stir and shake. And then I've got a ton of these little um, transfer sticks. So we're going to use that in a second. So I just want to stir it up really nice and good. And I'm going to add, so this is super, super subtle. I kind of played with the color of it today. And um, not a huge difference. But I'm going to add about one more spoonful here. 
then actually let me grab something to put these spoons on. So what I did, because normally you'd probably want to mix these together, but what I did, I put about three spoonfuls in here. It doesn't take a whole lot. And I'm just going to dip my Georgian cherry stick and put a little bit of this in and stir it up. And you guys can see it's just slightly changing it a little bit, giving it some... Um, it almost looks more like chocolate instead of coffee bean now, if you know our paint colors. And I can tell that's exactly about right where I want it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So steaming is a really quick process. Um, now again, this is oil-based, so you want to, um, you wanna be working in a ventilated area um, and I've, I've got some air going through here. If you guys can hear the, the fan pulling it out in the background. Um, but it does have, it does have a scent to it. And by the way, right now I'm just pressing my lids on. But one thing about the no pain gel stain, you want to make sure you hammer down your lids and I'll do that after the live. And uh, because you want a really good seal. Otherwise, um, it will harden the very top of it will harden. It'll almost be like leather. Um, and you'll have to dig that out and waste some of your good stain. Hey, Heather. Hey, Deborah. All right, so we've got this. Actually, I'm gonna mix a little bit more here because I see a chunk of that Georgian cherry on the side and I want this all mixed in. Perfect. So another thing, if you've seen me stain live before, and I'm going to move you guys around a little bit. Also, you want to wear gloves. Um, Oil-based, it does not clean up with soap and water. Um, oil does remove oil, though. Um, I typically use mineral spirits. Hey, Patricia. I typically use mineral spirits, though, to clean it. Um, <coughs> but most, most of our products are water-based, so it's just a soap and water cleanup. So you do want to use gloves so you can get it off your hands. I've actually stained my hair before. And I'm going to leave you guys kind of pointed down because I'm going to stand up here. I want you to be able to see the furniture. So normally, bring you in a little bit. So normally when I apply stain, I usually prefer to apply it with an applicator pad. Super easy. Um, but in this case, because I said um, I want this to go on nice and evenly, um, I'm actually going to use a method I used to use all the time. I've got a t-shirt here to wipe it back. And we're going to apply it with a brush. Um, so for my oil-based brushes, I do not wash those out. Um, you can keep them pretty much forever in a Ziploc bag um, in the freezer. So you just put it in here, get as much air as you can out of it, and then you just stick it in the freezer and um, you're all set until you're ready to use it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply a very generous amount. And by the way, my conditioner has been on for about 15 minutes now. And when you apply with the brush too, it's really easy if you have, um, like I had a little dent in the wood over here. It's really easy to get that stain in, um, a little bit easier than when you're using an applicator pad. And we're just gonna brush the stain all over this. So of course, when you're staining, you wanna go with the grain of the wood, um, but Oil base takes forever to dry, so not like the Voodoo. Um, so you want to, you can go whichever direction you want. So to get coverage along this tape line, because I've got this back painted, I'm just gonna go in the other direction and then I'm just uh, kind of sweeping it out with my last pass to go with the grain of the wood.
kind of trying to decide what I want to do with these inlays too. Um, I almost want to go in with another stain color and kind of highlight those, but I haven't quite decided on that yet. I just want to put it all over the piece. You can see I'm going in lots of different directions. And I do, you know, I've been using the Voodoo gel stains a lot and I love them. But I do love an oil-based stain. I just feel like it's so nice and dark and rich. Um, but I love mixing with the Voodoo gel stains too. And the Voodoo gel stains, those are our water-based stains. So they're super fast drying. Um, I mean, they're dry within like 15 minutes generally. So now that's another thing with our no pain gel stain. It is oil-based, so it takes a lot longer to dry. And it does vary, I mean, by weather conditions. I'm just gonna get these sides over here. It does, the dry time varies by weather conditions. Like if you're in a humid spot, if it's cold, if it's hot, you know, if you're in a really dry area, um, it's gonna dry a little bit faster. But um, you do wanna wait before you put, you can put a water-based protectant over them. I've got a little crack over here I'm trying to get in. You can put a water-based protectant over them, but um, you do wanna wait about three to five days before you do that. Um, yeah, so true, Dixie Bell. I, I don't know, I love stain. I love, I always try to save a top if I can. And um, honestly, it really just depends on how fast I need it to dry too a lot of the times. Because you can, like with the Voodoo gel stain, you can take the Black Magic and the Tobacco Road and you can kind of make a walnut color. I mean, they're gorgeous layered. Um, but now with this oil-based stain, you do want to wait, like if you want to apply a second coat, you usually want to wait about 24 hours before you put that second coat on. Um, you want it to feel dry to the touch. And you know, if you're not used to these oil-based stains, let it dry the three to five days because it will feel dry to the touch prior to that. But that doesn't mean it's dry throughout and that it's ready for a water-based protectant. And I will normally use a clear coat, um, Gator Hide if we have that available. Um, but the, the clear coats are usually sufficient. I usually only go Gator Hide if I'm doing a kitchen table. So we've got all the stain on here. It looks really, really dark right now. So we are gonna go through, and actually let me put my brush back in the bag before I have stain everywhere, which happens to me frequently. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually wipe this back. So you could leave it like this if you wanted to, but this is not what I'm going for here. Um, so I am gonna wipe this back and I typically will use just like a, a, like a lint-free t-shirt. Um, and then just, I usually cut them in half. This was my old knee surgery TOC t-shirt, but it had a couple holes in it. Um, so I'm going to wipe it back, but, oh, hey, Wanda. Are there any updates yet on when Gator Hide will be available again? I, I haven't heard anything recently, but I, Dixie Bell definitely could probably answer that better than I could. Um, so when I wipe this back, though, I actually am going to, for the most part, leave, well, here, I'm not gonna switch areas, and let me show you what I mean. So I just wiped that off. I'm gonna keep it on the dirty part of my t-shirt and I'm just gonna keep going back and forth over it. It's gonna give me kind of a nice little streaky look. And you wanna keep going with the grain on the wood while you're doing this. But I just wanna work this stain in and pull off the excess. And normally, I'm gonna go back, you see me doing little short strokes. This could give me blotchiness. 
if I did this and I hadn't conditioned the wood, um, because I'm getting a buildup of stain in a particular area. Um, so now on this last stroke, I'm going all the way to the back and all the way to the front. And so, actually I wanna keep it on this section because I want it to be pretty even. So the reason I'm keeping it on here, if I would switch to a clean spot, it's gonna actually pull back more of the stain. I'm just working my stain around that I applied with the brush and pulling very little of it back. That's one of the big differences too with using an applicator pad and using this method. I pull a lot more back with the applicator pad. It's also harder to get into, like this was a kind of a rougher surface with the grain. It's a little bit harder with the applicator pad to get into all those little divots and those little areas. So this is about how I want it to look. I've got some of those very, very slight red undertones showing through, and you saw I only added a tad bit of the Georgian cherry, but I still have that nice dark brown. Let's see. People try the stain. So yeah, espresso and walnut are actually my, my two favorites. I use the Colonial Black as well. I usually only go one, one coat with the Colonial Black, and I really like it when I'm using like a, a, a fluff and like a driftwood um, blend, stuff like that. And I try to leave some of that wood showing through. So let me tell you guys, I have an odd spot up here where the veneer was kind of a little damaged, but I think actually that it's covered pretty well. But if this starts to stand out a little bit more, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, I will actually go back after about 24 hours with the stain, I will go back and do a little dry brush over that um, and kind of blend that spot in. But I'm really loving how this is looking. Um, and, and this will change a little bit too as it starts to dry. Let me just go ahead and wipe this side back. And again, I'm just going in nice, long, even strokes. So for this side, I've got a little bit much on my rag, so I am gonna switch to a cleaner spot. But I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure because I don't wanna take a lot of the stain off. Okay, and I've got, so when I did that, I've got a little lip coming over here um, where the stain has gone over the top. And I'm very lightly, no pressure, just smoothing that out. I don't want to take the stain off. And it looks like that's pretty much the only side that I had that going on there. So perfect. This is just where I want it. We're going to go ahead and that's it. Um, so, I mean, super short, only took us a few minutes. Let me go ahead and put that rag in a safe spot. And then we're gonna pop down and we've got a little bit of time. We're gonna go ahead and talk about silk and do some painting with espresso. Or not espresso, <laughs> whoops. We're gonna paint with Mirage, the new silk color. So have you guys seen all the new silk colors? Um, they're, they're amazing, I love them. I'm gonna bring you guys down a little bit so you have a slightly better view here. And of my cart with my million Mr. Bottles. <laughs> Might not have enough. Um, so this is, have you guys painted with silk before? Are you new to silk? Um, I love it for a one color finish. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's an all-in-one paint. So it has a stain blocking primer, so it's gonna block the tannins um, from bleeding through your paint. Um, you know, the biggest thing I hear about that, if you don't know, you know, kind of what those tannins are, um, there's certain woods that have a lot of tannins in them, like mahogany's a bleeder, cherry's a bleeder, pine knots are a bleeder. Um, oak is a bleeder, but not as bad. Um, but people who paint white always say when they add their protectant, it turns yellow, and they think that's the paint. Oh, I know, I love silk too. And they think that's the paint, it's not. The 
when you protect over it, that protectant helps to draw the tannins out. It can come, tannins can come through, I mean, months after you paint something, but it helps draw those tannins out. And that's why the paint is actually turning yellow. So silk has a built-in primer. You don't need to put boss on for each coat is equivalent to one coat of boss, like boss blocking primer. And then also it has a coat of protectant in it. So it basically has like a clear coat inside the paints as well. Um, so it just saves you a ton of steps, especially if you're going one color. Silk is almost always what I recommend for a one color paint job. Um, and now that we have the 10 new colors out, it's even easier to find what you're looking for. So I'm gonna start off um, so I like to switch brushes on a piece because I like to use the brush that I feel like best works for a particular area. And so for legs and stuff like that, um, spindles, you know, chairs, everything like that, I like to either use a round small or a round um, large brush um, just because it, it goes over the legs really well. You don't have too much paint that your paintbrush is holding. And... It just makes it easier. You don't have to worry about the edges quite as much. Whoops. So if I were, I'm gonna be using an oval medium on this part down here. If I were to, I can paint this leg in the oval medium. I just wanna make sure I have coverage everywhere up here. I can paint that in the oval medium. Let me show you guys can see and my head's not in the way. That happens sometimes. I'm going to spin you a little bit. There we go. So you can use an oval medium, which is this large brush right here, but that holds a ton of paint. These are little skinny legs. And if you've seen somebody who's painted like little skinny legs like this, and then you see that, um, and then you see that edge where all the paint went over the corner, um, and there's kind of little globs of it and you have to sand those down. Um, this will help, help prevent that if you're using the right size brush. And of course, these are synthetic brushes, so it is going to help minimize the brush strokes as well. But silk is a self-leveling paint, um, so that definitely plays a role too. Sorry, right, I've got some little intricate sides here. I just want to get those situated. So with silk, um, typically want to start with a dry brush or a damp brush. Um, but it's not like the chalk mineral paint where you need to use the, the Mr. Bottle um, to keep it. In fact, you don't want to use a Mr. Bottle with this. I've got a big lump of paint down here. I'm just going to wipe it off right quick. Hopefully I don't make a bigger mess with the stain rag. There we go. So when you're using silk, you just want to go in long strokes. Let me see. I'm not going to paint that top part. I want you to be able to see where I'm going. But that's why I like to switch my brushes around. I want to use the brush that's right for the part that I'm painting. And I mean, it's super quick and easy. You don't want to overwork it. It dries from the outside in. So if you overwork it, um, you're going to peel and it starts to dry and you're still working it. You're going to actually peel back your top layer and then you'll end up with um, drag marks. So just want to go in nice long strokes. Smooth your paint out, and that's another reason I like to use the right size brush particularly. Because you don't want a ton of paint on here that you're working to smooth out because you've gotten too much. And then it starts to dry and you start getting those drag marks. And I always go over the edges with my finger anyway just to make sure that that's all smoothed down. We're just going to paint this inside leg here. So I don't think I've um, I don't think I've missed any questions yet, but 
if I did, like I said, I'll go back after the live and check those out. So silk is really, like I said, it's really awesome. Um, I do have one coat down here already in the Mirage, and I love this color. You guys, I love all the new silk colors. Um, haven't used them all yet, but I'm working on it. All right, so I'm just going to spin this. I'll paint that top section after. You guys can't see up there, so... But I mean, these, the round small and the round large just are made for painting legs, especially like, well, I mean, there's other ways to paint spindles faster, but if you're going to use a brush, this, these are definitely good brushes to use. And the silk washes out so easily. But you guys, has, any, has anyone tried the new, um, clean as a whistle. So I didn't use it. Here, let me make sure you guys can see where I'm painting here. So I didn't use it um, for quite a while. It was out for a little bit before I used it. And I'm bad with my brushes anyway. I use scrubby soap to clean them. And um, that new clean as a whistle though, it's like a license to not wash my brushes. All of my brushes look brand new after I soak them in there overnight and then wash them. That stuff is amazing. I have never, and I've painted for years and years. I've been painting since I was like three and I'm old, so it's a lot of years. Um, and I have never ever seen anything. And you guys, it takes a tiny, tiny bit of paint. This paint, I have painted two coats on the other nightstand. I opened this new. And just to see how far this silk goes, I have painted, I said nightstand, end table. I've painted this other end table. This is all the paint that I've used. The other end table is completely painted and this one just needs a second coat. And for the integrity of the paint, it has excellent coverage, but you do want two coats of silk um, is the recommended um, amount. Even if you have that coverage with one coat, for the integrity of the paint, you just want to use two coats. And I'm a very thin painter, um, so my paint always tends to last a long time. But, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint this part of the other leg and then we'll use the oval medium and just do the inside so you can see kind of how fast that goes. Legs are tedious, they just are. And I've got, so my coverage is really good with that one coat, but I've got some spots on here where um, I had to sand quite a bit um, to get some scratches out and stuff like that. So I'm really trying to make sure in those raw wood sections, um, I want it to be really smooth. I wanna make sure that all of my paint is getting, is getting in, that's another reason that I'm painting so slow on these legs. So let me just bring you over. So I just got a little bit of paint up on the top here, but I just kind of wipe that down. And what I typically do is I kind of offload my brush and then I just smooth it all out same direction, unless I need to fill something, like I just went sideways. That's so I can get the paint and even coverage over the entire leg. So since we've got it at this angle, I'm gonna bring you guys down a little bit more and we'll go ahead and that way you can see the whole inside section. So another thing that I do with silk, so my brushes are damp, and it, I think I was touching on this earlier and got distracted. My brushes are damp, um, and I like to use a damp brush. Um, 
And it's okay, it's recommended that you start with a dry brush, but um, you know, if you don't have a lot of brushes too, I mean, I have a ton, I could always start with a dry brush, but if you don't have a lot of brushes, whenever you wash your brush out, you want it a little bit damp, but you don't want a ton of moisture in it, you can take a paper towel, squeeze the excess water out, and then if you, well, you probably don't wanna do it on your pants, but I do it on my clothes all the time. You can get the excess water off by just flipping it back and forth. Um, but like I said, I like for my paint to glide on. So, you know, and I wouldn't want to paint this long strip in a, um, I wouldn't want to paint this long strip in a with a small brush and um, it just increases the chances of brush strokes and there's just no need for it um, I've got a large flat surface here so I definitely want to use the right size brush again very little paint I'm not dipping my paint all the way up just on the tips there and long smooth strokes you want to overlap when you're painting with silk you don't want to overlap a partially drying section. So you want to go quickly, and this is how you keep the drag marks out. You just want to go quickly and never overlap an already drying section. So you want to overlap and get that next area in while it's still wet. And by the way, I don't know why I'm painting out of my jar. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that either. Normally I put it on a plate, but I didn't, I didn't put this one in uh, one of my FIFO bottles. Um, I had it in a cup earlier working with it. Let me just make sure you can see. So I love this color. Love it, love it, love it. I just did a cabinet too with the buds and branches transfer in um, morning sunrise, which is, it's like a nice dusty pur purple color. It just sold today, um, but it's beautiful. The midnight green is gorgeous. So I'm gonna tell you what I did. I'm gonna be really careful and just barely smooth that out. I got a big glob of paint. Normally I would turn this around and work on the other side, but since I've got the camera here, I'm just trying to get that all while I've got the table positioned this way. Just wanna make sure I don't have a bunch of paint dripping down the sides or anything, that it's nice and smooth which I did have some overlapping over here. Actually, let me turn this around. I should have turned it around earlier. So I have a little paint that's coming off the edge over here. I smoothed it out some, but I just quickly want to go ahead. I'm not adding more paint to my brush because I still have excess on here. Um, I also didn't get that spot really well painting it backwards, but that's it. So that inside is totally done. I've just got a couple more legs to do over here. And actually, I've still got enough time. I could probably actually finish this up. It's not, I mean, this is a super easy update. I missed the inside of that leg, but that's fine. So this has just been kind of sitting here and I'm gonna very, very lightly mist it. Um, Again, not recommended with silk, but I've painted with silk enough that I know for me um, how it works best. So, you know, it's not recommended. You can actually keep your brush nice and wet just by um, keeping the silk paint on it. But again, I'm just offloading my brush. Making sure I get that good coverage. And my last strokes are always up and down. And as it dries, so if you look down here, it looks super streaky. 
that's just it drying. Do not be tempted to go back over it because it's more dry in some spots than it is in others. And if you try to go back over it, it will, because of the way silk dries, it will pull back that top skin and um, you will end up with drag marks. So you want to be, don't be tempted to go back over it. Um, kind of like, it's kind of a similar thing with streaking in the clear coat. As it dries, it looks really streaky. You will definitely make it dry streaky if you go back over it though. Um, it'll be fun if you just kind of let it be. So let's see here. I've spun this thing around so many times and I'm, you know, whenever I'm painting here alone, I'm paying more attention to what I'm doing. Um, but I'm not sure. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't painted this leg already. Just offloading my brush to get that last little bit of paint off. Making sure I've got coverage there. When I wipe that down too on the part that I've already painted, I'm just very slightly running my finger over it. I don't want to pull any of that paint back. Um, I'm just keeping going with offloading. Oh. With all these legs, it's hard to figure out where you guys can see and where you can't see and what angles you're at. I usually try not to do something like this live. But that's pretty much it, guys. We, I mean, we still have a few more minutes, but um, I'll probably go ahead and pop off. I'm going to finish painting this, but I just want to just want to show you again i just did two end tables and i have not even used a fourth of the silk paint so it really really goes a long ways can you use busting wax for a stencil um i've never done it but i don't see why not um so like if you wanted to do like a like a black busting wax I mean, technically you could. You want to make sure that your wax isn't too th it isn't put on too thick. So it would be something that would be super subtle. Um, or even if you just wanted to change the sheen, like with CMP, you could use a clear wax. Um, <clears throat> if wax is too thick, though, it really will not dry well. It'll kind of stay tacky. So you just don't want to do it. You don't want to put it on too thick. You want to make sure that it's somewhat thin. Um, I'm not sure I've even, I've never done it. I mean, I use gilding wax, um, but I mean, technically you can. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do it either. It would, it would be exceptionally subtle, and I think you would probably have a hard time um, getting it. I feel like it would be, it would go on naturally too thick, um, so I think you would have an issue with it drying. Um, sorry, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> um, but what look are you going for? Um, because you would probably be, I guess if I understood the look better too, I could probably give you an alternative um, that might help. So like if you were just trying to change the sheen, a better option would be like a clear coat. But if you are trying to get like a subtle, um, like a more subtle look, I would probably, I'd probably choose one of the paints and you wouldn't want to thin it out too much. It would kind of depend on the stencil you were using as well. Um, so hope that, I hope that helps. Um, but thank you guys for hanging out tonight. Again, you can like and follow me on Facebook. Um, I will have these staged. It'll probably be about a week because I will not protect um, I usually wait the full five days. Where I'm at, it really takes that long to dry. Um, so I probably won't have them staged till the beginning of next week. And then um, I think that's it. But just like follow me on Facebook, um, the Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast Group, if you want to join there. And thank you guys so much again for hanging out this Monday night. Have a great night. Oh, thank you. 
I wasn't, it was my client that um, picked the color though, but I was super excited that she picked Mirage because I love it. It's, you know, that's my color. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks guys. Have a great night. Take care. Thanks, Dixie Bell.